On April 15th, thousands of Americans will gather for modern day tea parties, proudly named after the Boston Tea Party of 1773. Like our revolutionary ancestors, we are protesting against a government whose powers are spinning out of control, a government that increasingly oppresses its citizens instead of protecting them. But what are we fighting for? Have we earned the right to call our protests by the same name the Founding Fathers used? Believe me, they understood exactly what they were fighting for when those Bostonians boarded the cargo ship Dartmouth and hurled chests of tea into the ocean, they were not just mad about high taxes. In fact, the tea acts that inspired the protest had actually lowered the tea tax on American colonies. No, the colonists were driven by loyalty to a certain idea, a certain view of the purpose of government which the tea act repudiated. That idea which they would soon immortalize in the Declaration of Independence was individual rights, the sovereign individual's right to life, liberty, property, and the pursuit of happiness, and the government's solemn duty to protect those rights, not invade them. But over the past two centuries, the ideal of individual rights has all but disappeared from public discourse. In its absence has emerged today's massive regulatory welfare state, which taxes away nearly half our income, tells us what medicines we can take, what kind of light bulbs to buy, and is rapidly consolidating power over America's banks, insurance companies, and industrial giants like General Motors. To return to the Founder's ideal, we, like they, must fight for individual rights, which means laissez-faire capitalism.